So last but not least, we have the sound. Uh, and we have to create buttons if you want to play music in your project. So I'm going to create a new layer in my scene now that I have all the uh, animation set up and I got my tile action safe here. Uh, everything's built out accordingly. I do need to extend this uh, tile action safe to the very end. Perfect. Okay, so everything's ready to go. And I'm going to leave that tile action safe active and locked down. I'm just going to go ahead and lock down all the rest of my layers just so I don't select anything and everything's done. I'm going to select the very top layer and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this one on music and then I'll create another layer and I'll call this one off music okay and on the on music what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a rectangle and I can uh, I could create any shape I want I'm just going to use uh, rectangles and you could do an oval if you wanted to of course but I'm just going to do a rectangle for this project. I'll add a, uh, I'll do black and I'll make it like a white stroke. That'd be kind of cool. And uh, let's do some rectangle options. If you want to bend them in a little bit, I can say like, I want a property curve of like two and it will curve the ends a little bit. So I could do like, I'll say 10. And I'll click and drag and see how it rounds the corner. So it makes it look more like a button control. If I boost it up a little more, let's say, uh, let's try 30. Yeah, let's say. And it has like this professional looking kind of symbol for a button. And I'll boost the stroke up some too. Let's say like, uh, well, that might be a little too big, 14. Let's try like 10. Yeah, that's cool. Hold shift when you create the rectangle, and then it can build it out for you. And again, I'm building this on the music on layer. And again, I'm building this button within the uh, the typography, the title I should say, because this thing is going to have titles in it. I could have it down here, but just for the title's sake, I'm going to kind of build it down here. So anyway, I've got the uh, the body built, and now what I'll do is grab the text tool. Let's grab like a uh, a white to match my stroke color. I'll just click and drag, and I'll drag out a text box, and I'll just do capital letters and name it on. And use the transform tool, hold shift, scale that thing down again. I'm building everything on the on music layer. I'll just put this right here. Perfect. And then I'll just go ahead and I will click, drag, and select it all, go edit, copy, and then on the music off layer, I'll go edit, paste in place, and then I'll just hold down on one of my arrow keys on my keyboard and just kind of scroll right on over. And then I'll just go ahead, double click, and select uh, the off, or the on, and I'll make it say off. Looks pretty good. And then I got my two buttons created, and they're both on the layers. Now, if you move all the way, you scroll all the way to the end of your timeline, you'll notice these layers have been built out all the way to the end. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So the next thing I do is I'm going to convert these into symbols for buttons. So I'm going to select the uh, all the contents on the on button layer. Let's just go back to frame one here. I'm going to select everything on uh, on the on. You can even lock what you've just put on the off and just do on. And go to modify, convert to symbol. I will call this a button. I'll name it on button. I'll come into your library like so. And then I'll do the same. I'll just lock this layer and lock the music for the off button and just uh, off music button. I'll just click, drag, select, modify, uh, convert to symbol. Uh, make sure it's a button. And we'll name this off button. Okay. And then that will come over into your library as well. So your two buttons are there. Okay, now at this point in time, I'm just going to go to File, Import, and Import to Library. And we're going to import in a music file that I found. And this is a music music file that I found that we'll be able to play during the uh, animation. Uh, we're going to be able to actually bring this music file in, and the buttons will turn it on and off, just like the example I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, this is a WAV file. I found out that WAV files work best, so if you find a WAV file online that you like to use, that's good. Um, just download it. Make sure it is a .wav. Okay. Right-click on it. Go to Properties or uh, on Mac. Right-click, go Get Info. It'll bring up and make sure it's a WAV file. They work best for Flash. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select this file for this lesson. I'm going to go to Open and bring it in, and you notice that this WAV file came over into the uh, library, which is right here. Okay. Now, once it's imported into your project, here's the really cool part about Flash. I'm going to select this uh, on button, this on music button that we've created. Just lock the other layer real quick, the off. 
I'm going to uh, double click and go into the on. And what you can do is because this is a button, it has its own timeline like what we already learned about buttons. So I can just select each part of the timeline and insert a keyframe. Select this one, right click, insert keyframe, and then go to hit, right click, insert keyframe. I'm not going to hit, I'm not going to create a uh, hit zone for the buttons because I'm just going to make it the button itself. But um, on down, so once you've established all your keyframes, click the uh, and select the down uh, keyframe. And then with that selected, inside you go to properties, and you could go to the sound name, which is called none. If you're noticing it's none by name, click this drop down, and it's going to locate and understand that it can bring and turn on the WAV file that we've imported. To make it actually play, you want to change sync to start. So click that tab down, goes to start. Once you're done here, just go back to scene one up here in the left corner and get yourself out of the button like what we learned prior. I'm going to lock that layer and do the same for the uh, music off. So I'm going to double click it, get inside the button. Let's uh, select each uh, section of its timeline for the overall. Select it, right click, insert keyframe, down, select it, right insert. Uh, right click insert keyframe select hit right click insert keyframe and then select down for that uh, off button uh, and uh, with the down selected go into properties do the same for the name you'll switch none to music and then for the sync you're going to say I want it to stop and once that's done if I just uh, go back to scene one here up in your upper left corner and left click scene one get back to the project file save let's test it And if I click on, you're noticing the music that I brought in is playing. And if I click off, it stops it. All these buttons are working. At any time, I could click the on and turn it back off. Okay, now if you remember my uh, the, the student project example I showed you, when you open this up, uh, the music's already playing. And uh, the way we set that up is we, have to, we can actually put the music on its own separate layer so the music starts up as soon as you open up the uh, project. And again, the uh, music controls are right here. So to do that in Flash, all you got to do is just create a new layer, name this layer itself right above the off music layer, music. And then with uh, all the other layers locked and just have the music layer selected by itself, just go into your library and locate your music file, which is your WAV file we brought in. Click and drag and just drop it onto stage. And you'll notice that the whole layer itself turns into this little uh, audio soundbar, which is exactly what we want to see. And if I go to File, Save, and then go to Control and test this, my music now starts playing as soon as I open up the project, which is exactly what we want. And then the Off button still works also. So if I click the Off button, it will turn it off. If I click on, it turns it back on. Okay. Um, and then the last uh, thing to uh, uh, utilize, if you want, is the on button. So if I want to, or off button, if you want to make them uh, roll over and change colors, um, you could just uh, unlock uh, your button layers and on the on button, uh, have it selected, double click, get inside there. And remember, you have the over feature. It works the same because it is a button. And then you can just basically come in. Say you want uh, the text to change a different color when you roll over. Um, and then you can even do the same on down. You can even make it uh, change it to another color or do whatever you want. So I'll do the same with the, the off too. Say on the over, I have the text. Uh, just have the text. You can do anything, remember. And then the down, I will have it. Uh, We'll test it, and there it is. And when, it's, when it goes down, it turns red, because it is a button. And that is uh, the setup process and how to build out the storybook, a storybook animation in Flash, you know, using the Flash software. Okay, so let's just do a quick review. Um, so basically, we've built out this whole scene here, showing you all the tricks and uh, using, you know, using the action script. Um, so we, we built out an uh, intro page, and on that intro page, we have an action script using the action script that was provided. 
which is this code right here. Uh, the first uh, keyframe for that intro page used all the code where we want to run the stop command first. So make sure that on that keyframe where it has the action, if you go to window actions, we're running that stop command first. Um, and the, the instance name is right here. Remember, we're using capital letters for this. Uh, all the uh, naming convention that refers to the instance name that's in the script all has to have the same ending number. Okay. And then indicate which frame you want to start it on. Okay. Uh, you don't need to run a stop command for the intro page because, again, if you look at this action script for the, the intro page, it already has a stop command running until the button is clicked, which is uh, this button right here. Uh, it will jump to whatever frame you specify. So in my case, I said let's go to frame 30. So if we look back in the action script, I said let's go to start this uh, animation, the storybook at frame 30. So at frame 30, I built out scene 2. I have my background elements that I built on its own separate layer. I built a button by itself on its own layer. And if we look at the action script right here, window actions, uh, there is no run stop command because we want to play the animation. And it's all been changed to button 2, everything in here. And we will be starting this at frame 300. So again, this button here, which is on uh, that layer that we created, this uh, button must be named, instance name, button2, and it must have a capital B. Uh, if we look at this action script, window actions, I have it starting at frame 300. So let's go to frame 300 and see what's going on here. And at frame 300, you can see that the next part of the storybook animation starts. Don't forget to run a stop command on that background, uh, this background elements layer for your uh, your first scene. That's why we you know created the rectangle and the ground plane and all that because we have to run a stop command so it understands when it gets done uh, playing through the animation it's going to stop until the button's clicked to start at 300. So don't forget to run your stop commands. So on the background layer for scene one where we built all the uh, background elements we create a keyframe and we run a stop command window action and then there's your stop command as it corresponds to what's in the notes. So looking forward, it starts a new scene. Uh, we had it set up where it starts at 300. So if we look back at the actions, I had this where the actions, it would play at 300. It runs, stops, and it will not play until the viewer is allowed to click this button, which starts at 300. At 300, we built the next part, a whole new scene of our animated storybook. And then we had a uh, button too. We built a button on its own separate layer here as well. Uh, again, you can build the button on the background layer if you want. Me, personally, I like having the button in, uh, in the foreground in front of anything that's animated behind it. So it's always up front and in, uh, allowing the viewer to uh, click and navigate through the whole animated storybook. Uh, on this layer, we have an action script. That keyframe, this is for button 3. So we changed all to button 3. And it looks like it goes into and plays at 400. So, again, you got to make sure that your button that's uh, being corresponded that uh, it is named button three and it has a capital B don't forget that as well uh, and so it plays all the way to the end and does not go to 400 because we have a stop command running at 399 which is on the scene two again all the background uh, objects and elements that are built for scene two on the background layer not the animated layers but the background layer itself we create a keyframe and we run an action and it's just a regular stop as it corresponds to the notes. And then it will not play until the viewer clicks on the button. And it starts it at 400. At 400, again, we play it all the way to 450. If we look at this action, I create another button. It's all named button 4. It will go to and play at the first frame. So it starts, it, it starts over entirely. So plays through. It has a stop command here to prevent it from running all the way to the beginning. You have to still run a stop command. And I put this button on the same layer as all the background element, which was this rectangle. So that is the breakdown. You can add more scenes moving forward. Again, you would add more buttons, but make sure all your buttons are named uh, accordingly. Then the next button, if I was to create a whole other scene and not have the end scene here, uh, that button will be named button 5 in the action script, uh, so forth and so forth.
Okay, and then last but not least, let's go ahead and publish it. So to uh, submit your final version of your project, you'll go to File, Publish Settings. And in here, we don't need the HTML wrapper. We can just do flash to SWF. Make sure your JPEG quality is at 100. Click your little browser folder icon. Send it out to where you want to go. I will say uh, Final Project, Storybook Animation. Very nice. Click Save. And then uh, I'll basically just go down here in the submenu, click Publish. You'll send it out to that location. You can uh, track it down. And it's uh, it's been created as an SWF, and it's uh, fully functional, ready for uh, submission or sent out to a client or whatever. It's got your on-off controls, again, working perfectly. Hit Start. Place for all your animations. And that concludes this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing your work. Keep in mind that you can uh, go to my LinkedIn page at linkedin.com if you would like to uh, link up with me and uh, have me as a uh, resource and a reference in your uh, list of contacts. You can uh, send me a message at my LinkedIn and uh, that will reach out to my Yahoo email, uh, hence my uh, Gmail accounts, and uh, I can always be there to help you. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to working with you.